This article courtesy of Mixmag talks about the up and coming band that people are basically legislating for in terms of, you know, nitrous oxide and whatnot, and just essentially the, the grip that balloons have taken on this dear nation of mine. The title of it, Hysteria Harm or Something More Sinister, Why the UK is Banning Nitrous Oxide. Uh, this is courtesy of Mixed Mag, written by a person called Tracy Kowalik. So it says, the UK has the highest drug consumption in Europe. <laughs> now you guys understand why at the beginning of the podcast, I had that weird coping session about my alcohol and drug use and the fact that I need to maybe put a lid on certain things if I need to achieve my dreams. I'm not the only one. I'm not unique. I'm not special everybody in this country is struggling with it in one way shape or form maybe it's because we don't have enough sunlight and we don't get to go to parks often i don't know what it is but look at that the uk has the highest drug consumption in europe full stop <laughs> in london the continent's capital a gram of gear weed dom perion ecstasy g mdma crack fentanyl psychedelics dmt and even rhino care are all but a text and a prius right away from your front door and from my own personal experience yes but the drug continually um currently so dominating headlines with reports hospitalizations nationwide is one that long been readily available at corner shops and online which is now set to change with the announcement of a ban on march 27th it's nitrous oxide occasionally dubbed hippie crap by politicians tabloids and second most used drug in the uk among 16 to 24 year olds imagine being 16 to 24 and doing that much flipping care developing brain right you're probably not sure who you are as a person let alone the drugs you want to be ingesting your friends are changing your family's changing your career projection is like everything's moving around you and that time you're <laughs> i love it i love it look at that picture look at that picture a kid under a statue of churchill with a massive balloon you absolutely gotta love that the only thing that would make this better is if the kid was wearing um what's a good brand here in the uk um uh, a sports banger if you know if you know you know a sports banger anorak under a churchill statue doing balloons with like maybe like a, a balloon that has like i'm sure balloons that exist that has like the flipping great british flag on it that would be awesome you have a great british oh that'd be a good thing a good lookbook picture in it a great british flag balloon with a kid wearing an anor anorak you know, uh, maybe a fake, a fake Burberry print anorak or something under the Churchill statue. Brilliant. It continues. The context. TikTok is flooded with braggadocious boasts of folks doing 100 balloons plugs in a single sesh. What's a plug? Balloon plug? Balloon. Oh, no. 100 balloon plus. I'm sorry. I'm reading it wrong. I'm the redacted one here. I've always said a balloon plug. What's a plug? Um, plus in the session. Um... Is that 100 balloons actually the rubber things or 100 canisters? Honestly, this is crazy. But among those, Kerry Ann Donaldson, a 26 year old paralyzed by. <laughs> uh, Kerry Ann, I'm sorry for laughing, but hope you get better. And a handful of B12 deprived youth are sending out warnings alongside Birmingham's neurologist David Nicole, who's witnessed nitrous oxide gain traction and devastating consequences it can cause firsthand. The, here's, here's the snitch. In the past, you may have seen one patient every 10 years because nitrous oxide, it was formerly listed under medical rarities. Now, NOS induced injuries are our most common call to the Birmingham Acute Neurology Ward ahead of these of, of other things. I see two new patients with nerve spinal cord damage and even paralysis caused by oxide every week. So kids are coming, so kids are waking up in the morning, going skateboarding, playing football, and then turning up at his hospital on flipping wheelchairs and not from football or skateboarding but from taking too many balloons weird nicole was first encountered the ship back in 2020 when he began treating increasing number of patients experiencing tingling or lost sensations in their feet i was cycling i wonder if this is to do with the pandemic also because i feel like with me like i said prior my pan my kind of pandemic alcohol and drug use went down completely because i was scared of the virus i didn't want to get it but then when i tried to kind of get back on it again I realized that my tolerance had also lowered. No, my tolerance is also lowered. So whatever I could do prior to the pandemic, I couldn't do again now. So I wonder if some of these kids came out of the pandemic without the ability to kind of, you know, temper, no, without the societal need to kind of rein yourself in because you're going to a club or you're outside of people. You can be at home doing what you want. 
and they went overboard. Maybe. I'm not too sure. I, I like to blame everything on the pandemic because it's an easy thing to point at and not yourself, but who knows. The quote. I was cycling every day and seeing those bloody canisters, whippets and cylinders on the side of the road. It really angered me because I'm seeing patients constantly because of this stuff. I live in a very middle class area in the Midlands and I work in a very deprived part of the West Midlands and you get it from corner shops all hours of the day across all those areas. And the one thing about England that I love when it comes to drug use or booze in general, it doesn't really discriminate and it's not only you know limited to certain groups of people on certain economic you know socio-economic levels you go to places in west london you go to places in north places in south and you'll find these silver canisters everywhere it's not just in hoods in kind of rough parts of town that i live in they're across the board so everybody's getting on it but they'd love to kind of you know make it a flipping pause and a black and brown thing when it's actually affecting everyone that's the actual way to deal with it properly if you wanted to but again what do i know um Pissed off and propelled to ignite change, Dr. Nicole the Narc um, launched a personal crusade across the country to spread the word. Laughing gas is no matter. It's no laughing matter. Lame. Laughing gas is no laughing matter. Lame. He was, but he has vocalized his growing concerns across mainstream and specialist news organizations, helping to conduct a recent investigation report for Sky News. But David Hiller, a freelance drug journalist, thinks that the medical argument Nicole is making is sensationalized scare tactic and nothing but hot air. Thank you for saying that. I love the pun. Um, government figures report that 56 people cited in the UK across 2001 and 2020 from nitrous oxide most commonly caused by hypoxia um efficient sorry if insufficient oxygen in your body it's not a positive statistic by any means but it's one that dramatically lower in comparison to the staggering stat um such as 840 deaths linked to cocaine use in 2020 alone to a neurologist the number of cases and usages probably looks alarming but to the typical Londoner who parties regularly and does balloons, the danger is not that deep. Exactly, I like this guy. The qualities people do, the quantities people do aren't as wild as they say, and the side effects from NOS are rare. Because who's actually doing these reports? Who's going to be sitting there writing down how much they do in a session? You're either too busy doing the session, or you're going to keep that shit to yourself. The only people doing these flipping reports are dorks and neeks who don't actually go outside. I would, I would assume. And if you are out there ingesting a lot of this stuff to the point where you get spinal issues might be your might be your problem might be your problem um it continues but miss but mr dr nicole's perspective this is bullshit he points out that while recent investigations from the admd found that the use of the drug reduced significantly over the past six years the amount that he calls super users has not He's treated various patients with life-altering injuries, having seizures and bladder and bowel problems, God almighty, mental health issues, paranoia, burnt mouths from inhaling directly from the canisters and sexual dysfunction. Surely at that point, it's not the canisters, it's you. That, that goes back to user error, isn't it? That's a famous Steve Jobs quote, right? You're using it wrong. Surely you're using it wrong at some point if you're the one who's getting to the point where you're having you know seizures bladder and bowel problems mental health issues paranoia burnt mouth from inhaling directly from the canisters and sexual dysfunction balloons are meant to be done just as you're coming out of the afters right you're coming out of a rave some random guy from road is offering you a you know free balloons for five or whatever it may be you take a couple on the way home you may be you know if you if you want to go crazy you might buy a whole flipping canister for him to take back to your afters and you keep it moving it's not that deep jesus he knows a colleague um, with two nitrous oxide patients who had drains inserted in their brains to save their eyesight from a rare inter intracranial pressure and one patient now permanently blind who was not so lucky. Yo, God almighty. The London Ambulance Service recently released a data which points to a trend rising um, in health issue related to the nitrous oxide uses, revealing that 999 calls from nitrous oxide instances more than tripled in a year. That's because people, more people are doing it. That doesn't mean you know, these these stats are a little bit, you know, a little bit skewed. With two one three recorded in twenty twenty three, up from sixty five calls in previous years. And the the funny thing is, the more of these articles they write, the more people are going to want to do them. Because I know for me, when I used to see articles on like Resident Advisor about the scene in Berlin and stuff, and techno, and just you know people putting on crazy parties and these amazing djs and stuff it just got me interested in going to these parties 
just people writing words and adding pictures to words and shit how much more for kids who have access to tiktok other bits of social media friends live streams they're going to be wanting to go there straight away especially if you're a kid and you live in ends like i do and you go outside and you see your silver canisters you're just going to be interested and think what's the canisters about can i use them so essentially these articles are actually encouraging some of that usage also which is an unfortunate part of it, but it's a reality. It continues. The response. At the top of 2023, the Home Office chimed in with big plans to push the ban of sale possession of nitrous oxide as part of a wider crackdown on antisocial behaviour. Um, although selling it and dealing us has been illegal under 2016 Psychoactive Act, having balloons at house parties and raves and festivals for catering purposes isn't. <laughs> I love that flippy stipulation. Having balloons at house parties and raves for catering purposes is not illegal, technically. There are a variety of loopholes distributors have slid through. Most commonly, for yeah, which I've seen. This is what you see on, on eBay a lot. Cream, yeah. Um, these yeah loopholes include commonly selling it as cream deluxe, fast gas, and smart whip canisters, which hold eighty balloons worth of nos, six hundred grams canisters, hundred fifty two small balloons, and up to waist high, um, under the guise of whipping cream and a smart whip from the local shop or a 20, 20 kg fast gas canister isn't for the great british bake-off remarks dr dr nicole that's what you see generally on ebay especially in the uk you see loads of people selling them as like um great british bake-off kits and shit <laughs> with a canister with like balloons in the packet as a picture you're like all right um, in the speech, Richie Sunak chose to swerve nerve damage and health risks selling NOS at dangerous quantities instead to zero in on nitrous being a gateway to more extreme crimes. What an absolute nonsense, man. Um, the, the kids I see doing balloons on a daily basis or especially outside of clubs look like the type of people who would feel guilty about stealing a flipping Kit Kat from flipping Tesco's. Like, come on, let's relax. They spray, they spray graffiti on war memorials, <laughs> um, discard needles and nitrous oxide cancers in children's playgrounds, gang together and cause disorder and disruption. How does he know this? He doesn't live anywhere near these places. Um, anyway, it continues. David Hiller weighs in, conflating nitrous oxide use with heroin use is unfortunate and it's doubtful whether anyone could focus on graffiti while doing one balloon exactly. Maybe Richie should look at putting more money into youth services instead. Of course, but is he? Not. Since 2010, toys have been closed more than to 800 libraries. They've sold off hundreds of playing fields. Look at these crimes from the Tories. And crippled youth services, underfunding arts by a third and cutting local authority grants by 40%. Twitter user MSG, MG Smig suggests, try reopening youth centres, swimming pools, lowering the price of football pitches and dance classes, reopen all the things that austerity brought the and poor and but not the privilege. It's simple. Give the kids something to do. I'm quickly move the tissue. You know the funny, you know the funny thing about this, right? This is really, really true. And in my experience, what what I found is that, and I was thinking about it just the other day because I was having this debate. I was talking about this actually issue with my brother the other day. When it comes to Pirate Studios, which I love, right? Pirate Studios is amazing. It gives you people the ability to kind of go and record, you know, professional level equipment. If you're a DJ, you can use these little studios that you can book for like, you know, £15 per hour. And you can, you know, use them to record a DJ set, practice, live stream like I do sometimes. They have dance studios that you can book by the hour. They have uh, band rehearsal rooms you can book by the hour and recording studios, right? Amazing. But actually, there was a time in my life growing up back in the day where those things would have been provided by the local council. So if your local council was an area where a lot of kids are into music and shit, there'd be like youth centers where they'd have like studios that kids could use for free. You just have to book them ahead of time. Maybe you can only do them in one hour, two hour slot windows, but they basically had computers that you could use in there, microphones that you could use. So you could essentially get started in making music that you maybe have heard on pirate radio and put yourself out there. So pirate studios would have been a thing that the local council would have provided beforehand for kids for free. That would have kept you off the street. That would have maybe kept you off of, you know, going down bad paths and doing all those little, you know, naughty things like, you know, inhaling too many balloons and whatnot. But because of all those cuts and because of, you know, parts closing down and, you know, all these places that you go to play five of side of football being grossly, grossly overpriced for the regular person to go and play at, it then drives people to do other things to kind of go and seek their fun even more so 
if you live outside of these main cities like Liverpool, so like Manchester, Liverpool, London, all these other places, right? Um, you live in a smaller town. There's not much to do except literally to do drugs. Like the amount of people that I've met at after parties, especially especially people who are like from very small towns who live in other places, maybe like even Scotland places that are outside of the Edinburgh and whatnot, and uh, you know, and whatever else city they have up there, I'm completely blind to my mind at the moment. But I remember a lot of these people telling me that part of the reason why they kind of got into drugs very early in life was because there was nothing to do. Once they reach a certain age, there really is nothing to do to kind of go out with. So you just end up doing drugs super early in life. And if they, if the government actually would invest more, again, in their head, it's just way more money, but you would actually save more money down the line in kind of halving the cost of police, you know, and any consequence of flipping antisocial behavior by giving kids things to do instead of just getting on it and getting drunk and getting high but at the moment parks are closing pitches are too expensive um there's not youth centers anymore like they used to be anymore you know all these places i used to kind of go to and especially in the summer holidays we'd have these things in my borough like these kind of summer school things where they'd set up these really fun classes that you could go to they were usually stuff that kids would like like i don't know computer programming computer game design art um you could do like um graphics you could do outdoor stuff like loads of shit you could do right and they're kind of like a summer school program type of thing and they're usually for kids from like low-income areas or families who maybe didn't have much to do at home outside of school because people like myself who didn't have a computer back home at school you'd be using the school computer to go on the internet so you'd essentially be um staying at school the, the moment me and i was growing up we stay at school until like 6 p.m and our school finished at four because there's nothing to do at home we went to stay at school use the computers fuck around in the football pitch and shit and then kind of you know then they'd basically maybe encourage you to come to the after school clubs and you can just get opportunity to hang out with your friends some more but those things were kind of gone by the wayside nowadays and essentially kids are trying to seek other means to kind of enjoy themselves and it's no surprise that they're going in this direction it continues on february 7th this year 11 experts from manchester birmingham nottingham and queen mary hospital of london um have released a clinical guideline advising doctors on how to recognize diagnose and most importantly treat people suffering from nitrous oxide induced health issues and prevent long-term neurological disability within the clinical guideline they revealed that there are patients uh, up using up towards a 300 580 nitrous charges per week some as young as 12 oh my god kids again on it right now off the back of that as of march 6 following a two-week intensive investigation the acmd the advisory council of misuse of drugs reject imagine the amount of people that are earning a living off of being on this flipping council this board of people who just sit there and pontificate about drugs they don't do flipping now Re rejected the idea that criminalizing oxide rejected the idea of criminalizing nitrous oxide firstly they felt that the ban would cause problems for those who needed the gas for legitimate purposes i.e the food industry in medical and dental um, settings as anesthetic and as acute antidepressant as a competent as a component sorry of rocket fuel and car racing secondly the acmd stressed that the home office should prioritize education and health warnings about recreational nitrous oxide use and focus on prevention rather than persecution both statements echoed um, previous investigations and advice and shared dating back 2015 that's the issue we have with nightclubs here in the uk if one nightclub has a fight has a shooting has a stabbing instead of you know um putting in places and systems that can you know prevent things happening again right instead of doing prevention they always go for prosecution take away the license of the club um take away you know close it down permanently maybe ban certain people from performing there typically black artists and whatnot because they think we cause the most trouble and all that malarkey which essentially negatively hurts the scene overall and basically puts people out of jobs it's crazy and obviously leads to clubs closing all over the place uh, but it continues to say buzz of monday march 27th home secretary suella braverman announced that the government has decided to ignore the amcd acmd instead it aims to ban the criminalized possession and sell and loss as part of a sunex antisocial behavior action plan which sounds a lot more like social control and the dark days of a hoodie pandemic i definitely agree hoodie panic sorry journalist moya um lufian mclean uh, makes the case in a piece of the for Novara media that Sunak's plan essentially seeks to reframe vulnerable people who dare to exist in public view as enemy of social norms it's a drug primarily used by young people often in public areas and there's an adjacent litter problem um calls from the certain twitches from certain countries to report an antisocial uh, antisocial inevitable 
there'll be criminal records handed out possible jail time and criminal service where offenders will be made to wear high-vis jumpsuits during punishment while carrying tasks like cleaning up graffiti unpaid work in shops and blah 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 anyway you get the gist it's going crazy over here everyone's sipping on the flipping canisters and shit um personally i haven't done it in absolute years um legitimately i think it's a little bit overrated in terms of a drug i think when you do it a few times you kind of get bored of it it kind of hurts my head makes me dizzy i'm not really in the mood to be doing this all day every day but again i had my time with it it kind of went it passed and it kind of is what it is but i also find the idea of them kind of making it seem like a sort of issue that is only affecting certain people within certain socioeconomic states within certain economic places of certain races is hilarious because from what i've seen when i go out i see every color race and creed doing balloons not just the blacks not just the whites not just the poors everybody everybody is doing this shit that's why the usage is so high and that's why people are becoming crippled off of it because everyone's doing it and they're doing it to excess like we do here in the uk we have an issue with excess in the uk we generally do we don't know how to behave and the government don't know how to treat us like adults so it's a perfect kind of storm for just absolute nonsense and people doing the most and because nos is kind of legal people just do the most and take it to an extreme and because the government don't know how to you know help people and kind of assist people in any way meaningful way they're just going to end up banning it because it's it wouldn't surprise me if in some councils wherever kids take nos it wouldn't surprise me again this is me throwing out a guess here i don't know if this is true but it wouldn't surprise me if there are some public spaces like this girl pointed out right who's this person um let's see there's an article someone it was like a link said about people doing it in public spaces what was the quote here um let me see if i can find it yeah this is the one journalist moya lofian mclean this person said this drug is primarily used by people young people often in public areas and there's uh, there's an adjacent litter problem there right it wouldn't surprise me if a lot of councils where kids take nos in public spaces like little parks and whatnot in playgrounds it wouldn't surprise me wherever those places are where there's benches that councils are now putting like skater stoppers on there so you can't sit for long they're making the chairs oddly narrow by putting rails and next to it so you can't sit and lie there with friends or just removing you know flipping seats overall so people can't sit down and do stuff because they don't like people hanging around so i i would guarantee you that our council is now doing that i'm just guessing it but i know england was so anti-fun it wouldn't surprise me if there's some councils that are ripping chairs from parks so kids can't sit on them because they think it might encourage them to do gas i guarantee it's happening and that's where we flipping flop as a flipping country that's where we flip as a country but yeah article is smasher it's super long i want to read the whole thing but definitely check it out if you need i'll put the link in the description if you haven't seen it already <coughs> if you're listening via the audio podcast so you can check it out anyway